What's up, everyone? All right, so in today's episode, I'm gonna break down the trades that I took this morning. So as an active trader, my goal each day is to find stocks that are moving. I don't make money buying a stock at five and selling it at five. I make money when I buy a stock at five and I can sell it at 550 or six, especially when I can do that within 10 or 15 minutes. So what I wanna do during this episode is I'm gonna present the best trade from today in a little bit of a class format to walk you through the steps I took from how I found it, how I evaluated it, where I got in, where I got out, and then I'll show you my results. So we'll also go over some of the other trades that I took and um, I'll comment on uh, a couple of questions that I saw in yesterday's recap. So let's go ahead and jump in on the screen here. Step one, I have to find stocks to trade. So this morning, AISP hits my scanner at 8.31 a.m. So the first alert was right down here. And um, let's see, oops, let me just go right there. So get my drawing tool on. So this was the first alert at 8.31 a.m. Now the stock was priced at $2.08 at that moment. Only 25,000 shares of volume, so very light on volume, but it's popping up, right? It's just squeezed up, it's up 26%, all right? It's um, got an 18 million share float. So for those of you that already understand my strategy and you've watched longer episodes where I go into detail about my day trading strategy, you're gonna know why this is a stock that I was willing to consider. Although the float was a little higher than I typically would love at 18.71 million shares, I was willing to give it a chance because the stock, well, it popped up on my scanner and within 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds, had gone from 208 all the way to 247, which put it up 49% on the day, which at that moment made it one of the top percentage gainers in the market. Okay, so I saw it very quickly, which is great. So my next step, step two, is to identify the catalyst. So I have to check for news on the news feed. So I saw right here that right at 8.31 a.m., there was news posted. So Airship AI announced a significant sole source contract award with the Department of Justice for Acropolis Enterprise Video and Data Management Platform. I don't know what that is, but that was the news headline. Okay, now that's fine. So now we know that there's a catalyst and the little fire symbol means that the catalyst has just come out like it's, it's brand new, it's hot, hot, hot. Okay, so step three, I pull up the chart. I gotta analyze the daily chart and figure out what the context is. And the first thing I notice on the stock is that, oh, this is a recent special acquisition company. It's a recent SPAC merger. How did I know that in an instant? Because SPACs trade at $10 a share, almost exactly $10 a share. The way a special acquisition company works is the company is formed with the sole purpose of acquiring another company. They're gonna acquire a company and make it a publicly, publicly traded company. So a special acquisition company uh, takes on investors at $10 a share. So I could buy into a SPAC at $10 a share. It could be, you know, SPAC XYZ, doesn't matter. And I don't even know what company they're going to merge with. But I can put in my money at $10 a share, buy a couple thousand shares or as much as I want. And then when the news comes out that the company has found its, pro its target to merge with, then at that point I can decide whether to redeem my shares. Now, I don't want to be in on this company. I want my shares back at 10 or if I want to be part of the position and, and hold shares of that company. This is a strategy used to bring private companies into the public markets. So like a company could come to Warrior Trading and say, hey, we want to buy you and we're going to merge you into this publicly trade company and then Warrior is going to be a publicly trade company from that point forward. So. In the case of this stock, it was trading at $10 a share, more or less, because it was a SPAC, which is, they always trade sideways at 10, which gives people a chance to buy it or sell it. Sometimes they'll move up a little bit if there's rumors of a possible acquisition target. You know, oh, this company is thinking about merging with, you know, Airbnb or something really exciting. Stock will pop up, even if the merger is not complete. Uh, but in this case, anyways, they merge and the stock promptly drops like, you know, 85%. Okay, it does bounce, but then it sells off. And it's just been hanging out down here at $2 for, you know, four or five months. All right, so the thing about this is that despite the fact that the float is 18 million shares, this effectively is like a recent IPO. And I like trading recent IPOs because number one, 
they usually don't have a whole lot of trading history. They don't have a lot of bag holders. Yeah, there's some people here, but the volume is very light. So when these start to move, they can make some nice moves. And certainly if it gets over 10, we're in a blue sky scenario. Now, um, to add some context to that, I'll show you um, this chart here, SWIN. This one is a good example of a recent IPO. IPOs, it sells off. And then it starts to move up. And look at this. This thing's all the way up in, in $20 a share. It's moving. It's really moving quickly. So so anyways, um, so when I saw it was a recent SPAC merger, I thought, okay, I can discount the fact that, yes, it's got an 18 million share float. I'm now okay with that because it's got a chart that has more potential than your average, um, than your average stock that we might see. So once I've done step three, Step four is to pull up the level two and start to analyze whether or not I can take this trade. So when I first pulled up the level two, uh, now, of course, the stock has a lot of volume. But when I first pulled it up, um, the stock had just popped from $1.70 up to two, up to two fifty, and then dipped back down. I decided to buy this dip right here. It bounced off two. It came up. It almost double bottomed at two. And I bought as it came back up here at $2.19. So I took my first entry at $2.19 and my stop was at $2, which means I was risking about 20 cents a share. Now, this popped up to about like $2.38, uh, $2.30. It pulled back a little bit. I added right here and it squeezes up to $2.50, $2.60, $2.70. So that ends up being a pretty nice move. Uh, in in fact, it's, you know, I, I guess it, it did give me more or less that 40 cent winner that I needed for the 20 cent stop. It wasn't a perfect trade. Uh, and the reason it wasn't perfect was because it did sort of do a little stop and go here before it pulled away. And then there was big, there were some big sellers on it, which kind of surprised me. But there were some big sellers. There was one at 240, another at 250. Then there was another one up at 270. And then it drops here all the way back to 230. So my first goal as a trader each day, now look, everyone's different. My, or, my first goal, my order of business is to build a profit cushion. So I'm trying to make $1,000, my first $1,000 to get myself in the green, get myself a little bit of a cushion. Now I know there are some traders out there who will say, you know, Russ, you've made all this money, you've made millions of dollars trading. Why don't you just throw, you know, $50,000 on this trade and leave it all day? Maybe this is the stock that's going to go to, five or ten dollars a share while on the one hand i could in theory afford to take that trade i don't think of trading like that i feel like that is gambling i feel like that is speculative especially when you say why don't you just throw fifty thousand on it and just let it run i cannot get my head around that i need to be in more control so i never leave a position when i'm you know i never leave the computer with the position open I'm actively managing it, I'm monitoring it, and I am being pretty aggressive to get in and get out. And there are times where I can look back and see the bigger picture of like, wow, this stock I've traded from $2 to $10, and I would have done better if I had just bought and held the whole thing. But in the moment, you don't know if the stock is gonna go from, you know, in, the, in this case, $1.70 up to $2.70 and then right back down. And let me show you a reason why I might have that kind of fear. So let me try to remember, um, what were some of the stocks that we had this morning? So we had, um, let's see, ENCP. Let's look at the chart on this one from this morning. This one's also a recent SPAC merger. Stock sold off and then popped back up. Let's see. Um, ugh, my computer's been, I'm having a little bit of an issue with this computer. Let me close some apps I'm not using. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm overworking my computer a little bit right now. Let's see, let me close some stuff down. All right, so uh, so anyways, this one goes to 740 and then comes all the way back down to 560. It doesn't hold, not even close. Um, LVTX, LVTX, this one this morning, popped up, didn't hold, right? Goes up, comes back down. So I made money on the stock. We'll talk about this one maybe um, in a moment after I go over sort of the the first trades on um, AISP. But I made money on this because I got in on the pullback, I took profit, and then I didn't overstay my welcome. But for someone who gets in and is like, I'm just going to let this ride, 
this is a loser. Um, let's see. LIPO, this was a loser. So this one, this one pops up for like a fraction of a second and then dumps hard. Um, B I A F, loser, <laughs> another loser. This one pops up, drops back down. It's like, you know, so the thing is, after you've seen enough of these types of stocks, even P H U N at the open, uh, loser pops up, drops back down. You see enough of those and you realize, as a, if I'm going to be a successful trader, when I'm up 50 cents or dollar share, I got to pay myself. I've got to take that profit off the table. And you know what? Yeah. Will some of them end up going to 20 and 25? Sure. And you know what? I get back in. I get back in here. I get back in here. This is how I was able to turn a $600 account into 10 million. Now, if you want to turn a $10 million account into 100 million, you got to take more risk. You got to hold, you got to figure out which ones you want to hold for multiple days. And yeah, th there's definitely a lot of money to be made there, but it's a lot easier said than done. A lot. Okay. So, so back to um, the slide. So, first trade, dip here at 219, get some profit as it goes up to 270. All right. So, I'm breaking the ice. I first get myself up 600 on the day, and then 800, and then about $1,000. It hit the high of 270. It sold off all the way back down to 210. It comes back up, drops back down sideways, comes back up, tries again at 270. So I did trade it again in this area, small profit, nothing to be that excited about because it didn't really pull away. Sells off, comes back up again, sells off, comes back up again. And here, finally, we break through this 268, 270 level. So I took this trade and we got a nice pop up at 290 but then it drops back down. And what I actually did on this is I bought this dip. I said, as long as it can hold over this level, that's important. It was resistance, right? Resistance, it can't get above it. Now, can it be support? Because if it can be support, then we're in better shape. But these candles, big upper candle wicks, lower candle wicks, it's pretty choppy, to be honest. I ended up taking a 12,000 share position at 290 for the break of three, hits three, drops down, I stop out, comes back up. I get back in here. You know, it ends up working eventually. And I was able to size up. It goes up to a high 350, but I never really got myself big time in the driver's seat on this stock. So my total profit on this one, um, and by the way, after we had this MACD crossover right here, I felt like I had to slow down. I did get a trade on this spike right there, but um, in total, my profits are $3,160.07. Mm, nothing to really be that excited about. But I think what's more important here is I was trading the most obvious stock today. I was trading the leading gapper, the obvious stock in the market, 82 million shares of volume as of 1030. As of right now, it's got 130 million shares of volume. The flow is rotated six times. We've got solid volume, 2000 times uh, higher volume today than average. It was the right stock to trade this morning. Now, could I have traded it better? Yes, um, there are some things I probably could have done better on it. Um, but overall, I felt like I traded it quite well. So, you know, it, it just wasn't the absolute easiest one. So that was um, so that was AISP. Now, I did trade PHUN this morning. I got a trade on it right here as it started to pull away. Look, it broke through VWAP. I was hoping we'd get squeezed up to 17. Didn't work. But I did take a trade on that one for a small profit. I also got a trade on LVTX, on BIAF, ENCP was a small winner, and COCH was my only loser. I didn't trade OCEA. Um, it floats relatively low at 3 million shares, but what's interesting on it is that it's very, it's very thickly traded. Um, the volume on it is 57 million shares of volume. It's multiple days of momentum continuing higher. So, you know, there were some traders that were focusing on this one. Um, DTSS also put in a pretty nice move today. And by the way, so this got pretty much parabolic here. You then got a flush, which gave a nice bounce back up to 725, uh, 750. But now MACD is crossed over. This is the backside, volume declining. So that was probably the high for right now, but a nice move up to nearly $8 a share. Um, so that so that was OCEA DTSS. This one um, 
halted up. There was news that came out 10.45 a.m. Halts up, opens higher, dip and rip into a second halt, opens higher, dip and rip up to 13, and then kind of unwinds. Kind of tough. This is a time of day that's not easy for me. I'm not usually still um, focusing too much on trading. I was getting ready to teach a uh, class for Warrior Pro members. But nonetheless, you know, that that was a nice move. You can't deny that. A nice move there and a squeeze up to 1320 uh, before it pulled back a little bit. So that was good. That's actually the leading gainer right now to A7%. So DTSS, AISP, OCEA, these two were, mo were both more after the open. APGE today, too expensive. So didn't trade this one. Price is too high. Dave, too expensive. $33 a share. EVA, too cheap, $0.74. Cents. FENG, eh, it's a little cheap, but the float's too high. This one looks like warrants, no volume on it, 4,000 shares. And then CMAX, yeah, this one popped up. Some traders were talking about this, CareMax. But no trades for that on me, uh, for me. So I finished the day at 4,500. $4,594.17. Yesterday was $5,500. So at about $10,000 on the week and about $15,000 so far on the month. So, you know, the momentum is continuing. These aren't the big, big green days that I had um, of the last, you know, few weeks that we had in February. February was a terrific month, but my daily average in February that put me up over $114,000 was about 6,800, 7,000 a day. Right now I'm at 5,000 a day average. You know, that's, it's not coming from any individual home runs, but base hit, base hit, base hit, base hit, base hit, and you know, small loss, no big deal. So as long as I can keep up this kind of trend, keep my head down, stay focused, hit those base hits and, you know, build up a little, little bit of momentum, I'm gonna have a great month of March. So that's my focus right now, just to stay focused, stay green and not overstay my welcome. So today it cooled off, you know, a little faster than I thought. If we didn't have that one trade on AI SP, you know, it would have been a slower day, but still, I, you know, I broke the ice with a couple of trades here and I still would have been up 1500 bucks, which um, not as much, but you know, hey, green days add up. So that's the, that's the way to approach it. Focus on consistency. And that's what I'm all about. So I just want to be consistently green, base hits. I understand that I am sacrificing a little bit by not swinging for the fences and trying to hold for multiple days or things like that. But um, except for a few periods in the market, I have found that trying to do that uh, for me it doesn't work very well. So, you know, we've had some periods where the market's been super, super hot, but more often than not, we just see these terrible rejections. And then we see shelf registration, secondary offerings. And so I just, I don't have to worry about any of that. I get in, I trade, I get out, I make my money. I'm happy with that. So thank you guys as always for tuning in. I hope you hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. I hope you subscribe to the channel and I'll post an episode right here that YouTube thinks you're going to love. So check that out and I'll see you for my recap bright and early. Uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow and then I'll upload my recap tomorrow afternoon.